Welcome back to Growing Red Caribbean Papaya Trees from Seeds. It's day 290. This episode covers well over a year. This has been a very low maintenance series. I really haven't done that much. I started with a pot that was maybe 90 plus percent sand with a little bit of filtered clay soil mixed in there to hold nutrients and more water. I never removed the seed husks. I planted uh, way too many seeds and I thought there would be a self-winnowing uh, process going on where the largest ones would hog up all the resources, the water, and just dominate, and the smaller ones would just shrivel away, and that doesn't really seem to have been the case. Uh, maybe some have been lost, but I haven't really noticed any. The small ones, the more underdeveloped ones that were the late um, germinators, they just kind of hung on, and they're all packed in there with just a few leaves so the foliage looks pretty healthy and um, there's very little um, you know watering or fertilization going on really uh, there's not that much progress so this is day 336 so I don't have uh, very frequent updates in this uh, very long series because not much was going on and I don't want to overwhelm the video production process and the viewers by having um, bi-weekly updates etc so you can see some of these leaves are a little bit uh, gnarled uh, or deformed and um, yeah it just looks a little weird I mean they're not perfectly symmetrical but they're otherwise healthy um, some leaves actually you can see some no I think those are just petioles on the bottom most of the seedlings came up to one side and you can see uh, little shoots on this thicker one on the side of the main trunk so you can see these leaves are not, uh, well, very few of them are symmetrical. Maybe the ones towards the top, they have long spindly petioles and the leaves themselves are not too big. I'm sure there's a explanation for that. There's some webbing, uh, maybe that's from spider mites. I'm not sure. This balcony had a lot of spiders and I bought this large uh, spray tub of a spider side essentially and I use that to get rid of a lot of uh, spiders there was a spider infestation in this apartment so I stayed there for about eight months and this is day 358 you can see there's not really that much change there uh, I think in terms of plant health this was approaching uh, maybe the peak or maybe it was to come a little bit later but yeah, you can see the months are basically whizzing by. It's like one update every one to two months, one and a half months. And uh, there's not much progress really. So it's pretty much stasis. And I wouldn't be surprised if the roots were all uh, you know, saturated in the, the pot. It's not a very big pot. And um, it does have drainage holes on the bottom for those who think I'm always overwatering. It totally isn't the case. Uh, I can fill the water up to the rim of this uh, homemade planter. It's a dual trash can made from Rubbermaid trash cans. Uh, it's a soft plastic and I drilled a bunch of holes on the bottom if you remember from the first episode of the construction, the do-it-yourself part. So you can see we've lost uh, quite a bit of leaves there and um, yeah, there's a little bit of webbing here and there, but there's not really signs of an infestation. You can see one withered uh, seedling on the bottom. It's very small and underdeveloped. So there is a winnowing process. It's just very, very slow and not what I expected, actually. But I think in the past when I had uh, my low quad series, I didn't carry that very far. Uh, that one, it appears that, yeah, they all try to grow and... Uh, it would probably have to go on for a really long time for a complete winnowing to only uh, one or two survive. And uh, I have had series that have gone that way. And uh, I think the the lemon seed series has basically gone that way. And if you're up to date on that, um, yeah, after the move, I basically narrowed it down to just one. And it's doing great right now. So it's day 384, so we're approaching the peak of health for this uh, series in terms of at this apartment. And uh, if you look at the thumbnail of this video, you probably figured out that things uh, change drastically later on. 
and um, yeah I basically had to do the winnowing myself so you can see this big leaf on the top that's perfectly symmetrical so I have no idea how big these leaves can get um, I think the long petioles can be attributed to maybe the lack of light or maybe the species uh, is supposed to have much bigger leaves but I don't have enough light here to uh, allow for such development uh, none of these plants has had exposure to full sun because I've always lived in apartments with um, partial sun or partial shade uh, my last place uh, at my friend's townhouse uh, his condo rather that was like a, a full shade environment for maybe four and a half months out of the year and uh, there was about seven and a half months of partial sun so the leaves got really big and um, there was just uh, very big green leaves but at the same time it wasn't proper development the plants uh, weren't getting enough uh, photosynthetic energy to grow really fast. Uh, they were just sinking everything into leaf development trying to capture uh, every single photon that hits that balcony which wasn't a lot. So I'm using my backpack sprayer and I really like using this thing. It's a fun toy. You can see I sprinkled uh, miracle Grow chemical fertilizer, the all-purpose plant food at the top of the sand for each pot. And uh, I really like using this backpack sprayer because it helps wash away all the webbing and uh, assorted crap that just accumulates on here. This balcony was very, very dirty because there are these old growth trees. Well, I wouldn't say they're old growth in terms of uh, comparing to old growth forest, but for uh, residential landscaping, they're very mature trees. There's a eucalyptus, a Peruvian pepper tree and some pines. And those were just shedding needles and leaves and uh, peppercorns and things like that, eucalyptus leaves non-stop. So there's a lot of uh, foliage beyond this balcony. I'm on the ground floor and that stuff just, uh, it's a safe haven for all sorts of bugs. There's a lot of snails in this place. Uh, the spider infestations are out of control. If I don't clean this balcony for uh, two to three weeks and I come out again, it's just completely covered with webs on the plants, um, on the walls, on the corners, and I just use a broom to manually remove all that stuff. And um, yeah, you can see the double rainbow effect there from the spring, which is really nice. And um, yeah, not a lot of sunlight hits this. Uh, it gets a lot of hours, but due to the tree canopy, it just doesn't get a lot of intense sun. It's, it's more like a partial sun for many hours throughout the day, and then Maybe by mid-afternoon, there's, or even early afternoon sometimes, depending on seasonality, there's just nothing left. So uh, I'll add some more water on here to help better dissolve the fertilizer and the crushed uh, um, men a day, once a day multivitamins. So yeah, I'm doing all this spring. And um, it's just more for fun than anything else because, um, you know, it's just for aesthetics, for the videography because most of the watering still comes from using uh, showering cans. So it's day 405. I'm holding my finger up to the thickest trunk there just for comparison. So it's thicker or as thick as a finger, uh, not much thicker. Um, and basically all the rest have survived. So you can see the stems are, some of them are like a lush green. I think those might be the younger ones. And the thicker ones, like two of them in particular, seem to have been developing bark. So that's nice. And you can see there's webbing on everything again. So yeah, I think this is um, about as big as this whole thing got. I mean, it maybe got a little bigger after this, but that's basically it. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of snails on this balcony. So I bought the iron phosphate pellets, which I'll demo uh, again later on in this video towards the end uh, because I also had snail problems in the new place which was a, a townhouse so um, yeah I moved this around do some videography depending on where the sun is wash the leaves uh, get rid of cobwebs and start over you can see to the right there's the lemon trees and um, they're not doing too well they're losing a lot of leaves and 
Uh, it's sort of the same story for all of my plants from this time period in 2021. I stayed here all the way until the very end of 2021. So I moved in around, was it, uh, maybe it was like April, late April uh, or mid-May, something like that, early May. Um, I forgot exactly, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was May. So it was a full eight months and basically, uh, you know, I couldn't wait to get out of here because uh, it was just so infested with spiders and other um, bugs and pestilence. So uh, there's not really that much to talk about or cover in this period for my plant series because of that. There was very little progress. Uh, things were slowly deteriorating in health. I would rate the papaya as one of the more robust plants that I had because it just seems like uh, aside from maybe a very, very few seedlings uh, germinating very late and being crowded out and uh, maybe I underwatered at one point and, and dying in this pot, uh, everything else just sort of hung on and maintained green leaves um, despite the very suboptimal conditions I did fertilize, uh, you know, maybe once every few weeks uh, or months. Um, so it was very infrequent, but I knew it was kind of pointless to fertilize too much during this period because there, this pot was basically tapped out. So on day 43, uh, this is new footage. A few days after, on January 9th, I moved again. So uh, I was in the last apartment, as I said, for eight months. And as you can see, this is in full sun on these concrete slabs. So there's more heat radiating off of them. They get full sun, almost full sun, I would say, because this front yard is sort of uh, in a depressed position. So it's, it's lower than uh, sort of the landscaping little, um, I wouldn't even call them hills, but ramps nearby. And there are tall bushes, uh, but not tall trees so I don't have that canopy problem anymore and basically you can see that the leaves are rapidly falling off so this is just a few days of full sunlight exposure um, the plants are turning a sickly yellow so I think this might have even just been for some plants I think it was only like two days and then I did some filming and I immediately noticed uh, everything was getting roasted so the full sun was burning everything to a crisp. Uh, these plants have never had full sun. And in the last apartment and uh, the condo I stayed in before that, there's basically um, no full sun sometimes throughout the entire day. So this is day 517. You can tell that everything is turning yet more sickly yellow and all of the leaves have burned off except for that one that seems to have a little bit of a shoot. There's like maybe two that still have uh, leaves of any noticeable size. And even the new leaf coming out there, the Primordia, it's more of a greenish yellow or just outright yellow. And you can see the little stumps where all the petioles are. Uh, the bigger petioles that broke off leave this uh, white heart shape or triangle with sort of an interesting texture. So that's how they look like after leaves have been shed. And there's some webbing on some of these uh, leaf primordia too, which is a really bad sign. Uh, generally spider mites move in for the kill after um, everything is uh, going downhill for the plant's health. So I think that has to do with the plant's uh, innate immunity. And if the plant isn't doing well, then it doesn't have you know, any immune system left to speak of to fight that stuff off. So it's day 559, you can see that this uh, thickest one is generating leaf primordia, but they're all curled and gnarled. And this even thicker one as well. I thought that was the thicker one when I first uh, started looking at this clip. So yeah, these are the two thickest ones. And there's also one on the right of the second biggest one. That's got some leaf primordia. So they're trying to make an attempt to uh, recover. But you could see based on the coloring of these stems, uh, it's just awful conditions and there's spider webs. So I was really wondering during this time period, maybe I have to push them a few feet uh, towards the windows over there. We just saw my reflection in, to be in the shade so they can acclimate. 
but I ultimately decided against that. You can see here, this is just uh, maybe some kind of fungal pinching off or death. And it's weird how it's, it's bottlenecked below where this top part is. Oh, it's got like two sections that are just browning and pinching off. So I was thinking of doing a pruning and uh, of any of these dead sections, which I'm going to do now. And um, yeah, it's basically a slow clipping process just to make everything more aesthetic. Uh, I think it's uh, a winnowing process is long overdue anyway. And I'm thinking about transplant options at this point. So um, yeah, many mediums and, and different sorts of pots uh, need to be researched before I can make a decision. So yeah, getting rid of these uh, leaves and these webs, uh, it makes things a lot more aesthetic at least, even if everything's uh, sort of still failing. So it's day 561, you can see this um, big snail here. Well, it's all relative. Uh, if you compare them to say African giant land snails or something like that that can fill up your whole palm but these are big by California standards. So I used these iron phosphate pellets before to effectively eliminate snails in my last apartment and I'd even throw a little bit into the landscaping beyond my balcony railing to neutralize a lot of the snails there. So the mechanism by which iron phosphate uh, poisons snails and slugs is not really known but it's said online that they eat these and then they just move someplace uh, a little uh, further away from where they currently are and they go into their shell and don't eat and basically uh, die off and blacken so it's day 564 i was wondering if that thing is a slug it, it kind of looks like it I mean, it doesn't look like your typical dropping. It's not a bird dropping, so it doesn't really look like an insect dropping either. And you can see one down there too. So sorry for the out of focus uh, sort of vibration on the stems action. So um, yeah, this is pretty gross and uh, I just knocked that off. And then I threw that away, washed my hands. Stay 574. I didn't see those uh, so-called slugs again. And at this point, I'm kind of wondering, well, is it even worth it to water? You know, I just don't know um, what's going on at this point with the entire series. Uh, maybe I'm going to lose everything and that would be terrible. But I just kept soldiering on with this. I was hoping that it would recover. I lost my two pomegranate seedlings. So that series just ended. And then on day 588, you can see this big snail here. It's actually got a pretty shell that's kind of atypical. It's more like a very white or pale seashell. So at this point, I decided that there wasn't going to be any sort of action or impetus for action and that a transplant was necessary. And this was just sort of a, a general observation for all of these, mostly sand, somewhere from 75 to 90 percent sand pots that were just not really performing and they were drying out way too fast in the full sun especially with the heat radiating off these uh, concrete slabs all right so now i'm going to go over all the prep work i did for this upcoming transplant here you can see me preheating the oven to 250 fahrenheit that's 121 celsius well above boiling point and I'm doing this just to be on the safe side to sterilize my cocoa choir, which I'll show you in a minute. So this is a medium that shouldn't contain bugs or pests, according to the manufacturer, but there is a tiny uh, minority of Amazon reviewers that said they grew this, uh, used this to grow plants and had bugs. So um, you can never be too safe. This is my first time using cocoa choir. Some of my users suggested this a decade ago and I never listened back then, but I'm uh, always considering new ideas. And since uh, the whole sand and uh, clay soil, filtered clay soil mixture hasn't been working out that well in those uh, double stack Rubbermaid uh, trash cans with drilled holes, um, I've decided to go with this because I don't want to drag around hundreds of pounds of sand and clay anymore. 
So just for the convenience factor, I'm going to go with this. So there's the brick and you add 25 liters, 6.6 .6 gallons of water, and you should get 55 liters or almost 15 gallons of uh, puffed up hydrated cocoa choir. So this is what it looks like shrink wrapped and you can see there's already some holes in it. So it's very dry and if this package were to get uh, water seeping in, then it would bust open kind of like those uh, mattresses that uh, inflate out of the box upon exposure to air. So I've seen a lot of videos of this and I've done some research online and basically this thing expands like crazy when it comes into contact with water. So I'm gonna bake my brick. So that weighs five kilos or 11 pounds. It's not too heavy. And it basically turns into this huge volume afterwards. So after two hours of baking, the brick cracked, but it didn't burn or give off any smells so there were no smells before and there are no smells uh, during or after. So this bake surely killed any parasites that may have been present. And um, I think this should allay any fears about, uh, you know, spider mite eggs or other unknown exotic pests, um, you know, infesting my plants after I do this transplant because uh, these are made from coconut fibers from India, I believe. So. Here's uh, my new setup, uh, five gallon plastic pots with these matching saucers on the bottom. So this is uh, another purchase off of Amazon and I'm switching to this um, setup plus uh, cocoa choir just for the convenience factor. As I said, I don't want to deal with hundreds of pounds of sand and clay soil anymore. I want a very well aerated uh, growing medium and pot set up so you could see there's all these uh, holes and slits at the bottom they're not obnoxiously big but they're big enough to get plenty of air circulation coming in through the bottom which is really important so they're not perfect as you can see here this one has some defects but they're more aesthetic than most of the other stuff I saw on Amazon so I just decided to go with this and of course I'm not happy with that defect right there but I'm in a hurry. I don't want to deal with returns and waiting for another set and blah, 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 just if it's just one pot. So I'm going to check out the other four and I don't think it's worth it to deal with returns um, for something that I need right now. And it's going to just get beat up and scratched up outside anyway. So I think this is, uh, you know, it's going pretty well so far. So we'll see in a few minutes of this video um, how the transplant goes and what the aftermath of uh, using this and the Cocoa Choir is. So the pot is flexible. It's not a super thick plastic, but considering how lightweight this material is going to be and how fluffy it is, um, it's not a big deal to not have uh, basically a plastic fortress because I'm not using 50 pounds of sand and soil. So here's the obligatory Coco Choir expanding footage that everyone shows online. So I watched a few of these videos before I uh, delved into this and made the purchases. And right off the bat, I realized I used the wrong container shape. I should have gotten one of those big rectangular um, totes that's more wide in both dimensions than it is um, tall. So I picked the not the worst possible container but a pretty bad one because it all eventually ended up getting stuck on the bottom so the claim is that this can make uh, 15 gallons or slightly under worth of uh, cocoa choir once fully hydrated and that you need basically 6.6 .6 gallons or is it 55 liters uh, so um, actually I'm not even sure if that math works out um, yeah, I think they got the math wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, you add in your water. I use hot tap water. I don't even think the temperature matters. There are no smells. Uh, I hope the baking didn't, um, you know, won't accelerate the rotting process because I'm, I'm really looking for a growth medium that's uh, very um, soft yet supportive because it has a springiness to it and very um, filled with air space. So it'll be very aerated because the the main thing your plant roots need any root system needs is actually uh, plenty of oxygen and circulation of gases 
And uh, the reason I didn't want to use rotting organic material in the past is because uh, I don't want something that's just going to rot away and deprive the soil or the potting mix of its oxygen and basically suffocate the plant rot, uh, plant roots and cause them to rot. So this stuff is uh, very moist and uh, pliable and it's a, uh, you can feel how soft and fluffy it is. So basically, I, I think it'll be a great medium and I can't wait to see my plants growing in this and it's just way easier than the setup I had going for the last few years. So I'm definitely open to trying this new method out and um, seeing where it gets me. But um, yeah, I chose the wrong container and you can see I'm paying the price here already because in the end I spent so much time just sitting there outside at night um, uh, picking with my hands to try to get it out of the bottom because it was kind of like uh, compacted in there despite all the watering. It's day 598. I'm finally going to do the transplant after all that work, preparing the cocoa choir and the new pots. So the first thing I'm going to do is examine this snail. I'm going to toss it. Uh, they look all blackened just as advertised on the internet when they ingest those iron phosphate pellets. That one never moved again. I tried watering all the way to the rim and it didn't try to escape or do anything. So these roots are very interesting. Um, not what I expected, but uh, it just goes to show the robustness of this species. It, it just seems like the root is almost symmetrical in structure to the shoot system, and all the thickness is towards the center, uh, towards the base of the stem, where it borders the, the ground. So uh, these are very interesting. It's sort of like a root vegetable. There's very little lateral root development, and I hope that's not the case for all of them. You can see a little bit of a white root tip at the bottom. When you see the white root tips, you know that the plant roots are still actively growing. If everything sort of looks, uh, you know, dirt colored, brown, and there are no uh, white tips, if there are no uh, sort of reddish tips, uh, such as in the Joshua tree and the mango, then I think the plant is in big trouble. But these are all still uh, slowly growing. Well, this one probably not. Um, the smallest one that was sort of rotting away. That one had no hope. But the rest of these, basically, I think if I transplanted them into the right conditions, they would take over their pots or, or start growing into a proper tree in the ground. So here's another look at all of them. So, um, yeah, not much lateral root development, very few, if any, offshoot uh, primordia or activity going on. So after that, I'm just going to start scooping this uh, wet sand away. It's 90 plus percent just wet sand, uh, play sand from Lowe's. It's been washed. So it's uh, very easy to remove. Uh, this is one of the easiest transplants to do, actually, this medium. Whereas if you had something that was almost all uh, purely clay soil, then it would just all stick together. Then you're worried about the plant roots ripping. So these two are healthier in, in coloration. There's still a little bit of green in the stems. There's a little bit of foliage and uh, new leaf primordia, gnarled leaf primordia coming out of the bases. So I'll set all of those aside and leave these two biggest ones for examination last. So this is uh, the real gold mine here of this series because uh, these are the biggest ones and um, you know, I don't want to discriminate just purely on size, but it often comes down to that in nature. And I think in the bird world, too, they always pick the, the largest chick to survive. And sometimes they'll pick on the smallest ones or even uh, throw them out of the nest, so to speak. So that's what's going on over here. And when you do a transplant like this, even with a very light, fluffy material like this baked cocoa choir, I would strongly recommend you to... Uh, hold on to the stem uh, higher than the position you intend to be its final resting position because as you push this down what happens is uh, the dirt or whatever growing medium you're using will sort of push push down and uh, weigh down the stem and then basically when you get to the top you'll be really annoyed because uh, it's 
very lower than you wanted it to be. So uh, I would re recommend holding it higher. And also your hand can fatigue too over the course of a few minutes. Um, but in this case, this was one of the easiest transplants because um, it's, a, it's a hefty, thick stem and root system and there were very few delicate lateral roots um, so not many considerations basically for uh, you know just being really delicate and ginger with the whole operation uh, this is a very robust plant that's my opinion thus far and uh, the rest of this you know it's basically held in place by this fluffy cocoa choir which is kind of counterintuitive because you would think something that's got that much air in it would just move around a lot and compact and after you do the transplant and water the first time then everything sort of sags or, or tilts off in one direction that totally wasn't the case i think this material is very very springy it's made out of coconut fibers so i think it, it does a great job that springiness of holding everything in all directions it, it's applying like sort of a spring pressure and organic spring pressure in all directions so nothing tends to shift around which is another great endorsement for cocoa choir and i've had a really good time using it for all my plants so this was later um, but pretty soon day 599 i'm spraying this bare bio advanced three in one insect disease mite control um, it's also got you know it, it's basically pest control it's uh, mite control and it's also fungus control. So it's got um, your base is covered for everything and that's exactly what I need because those are the three main problems that are encountered for almost all seedlings and balcony growers like I was. So this is miracle Grow all-purpose plant food. So I'm applying that every two weeks. And then, um, yeah, basically I'm applying it through the showering can and then I use uh, the garden hose in the front yard to sort of spray everything off because I don't like the idea of residual fertilizer sitting on um, all of the, the undersides of the leaves and even the tops because I, I think that will burn the foliage potentially. Although I am well aware of, uh, of foliar fertilization and fertilizers on the market. So the frequency of the watering was once every two weeks and as springtime approached and then I went into summer later on in this video, I noticed uh, the cocoa choir was a little bit too dry. I was uh, watering to where the top would dry out the very next day in the sun and I wasn't really cognizant of the fact that the center mass was mostly dry. So. I did have a dry spell for some of these plants in spring and I can clearly see the leaves suffered at that point. And even I had some wilting for the very large leaves of my um, ice cream bean plant. So it's day 608, you can see the leaf primordia, it's still all yellow and unhealthy and sickly looking and there was such a temptation to move this into the shade just a few feet away under the roof or the shade of the roof and I decided not to do that I decided to keep everything in full sun and I noticed my other plants were starting to heal so to speak or recover so I thought this just needed some time so it's day 621 so that's been what a slightly over three weeks since the transplant you can see the coloration is getting a little bit better the leaf primordia is troubling the, the trunk looks like it has eczema or had really bad eczema and is very slowly recovering. So you can see all the leaf primordia. I can, I think it might grow straight up, but I'm not too sure. I, I do think the, the top has been burned. So maybe it'll have an offshoot coming out that will go straight up. So it's day 636. I was actually filming footage every two, uh, well, every week actually for every plant series at this point. But uh, when I decided to compile this video and do all the editing, I, I looked at the footage and I just decided there wasn't enough going on week to week to really justify including all those clips. So at this part in the video, I was just showing every two weeks, but the progress really started to accelerate 
And as you can see, there's a little bit of dark green. The stem is sort of uh, more greenish in tint. So it's day 643. The leaf primordia are getting bigger. There's still like a string of web to the left. I never see the spiders here, so I don't have a spider problem per se, but uh, yeah, I don't think these are webbings from spider mites either. They're typically not that long. Spider mite webbings are typically connecting the, the plant itself, not one plant to another plant, and certainly not just one thread like that. And I haven't noticed mites this entire time. Uh, I would definitely see the adult mites um, like I did uh, like 10 years ago, but at this point, or was it nine years ago when I first started my plant growing series? But yeah, there's um, no real sign of mites on the undersides or on top of the leaves. They're not crawling on these uh, webbings. So I don't know where those webbings are coming from. So it's day 650. So I just want to remind you that I am doing the watering, the fertilization with the, the multivitamins and the miracle Grow every two weeks. And I'm also applying the Barrier Bio Advanced. Uh, three and one, which uh, counters insects, uh, mites, and uh, fungi. So that's a regular treatment. I'm not showing every single watering uh, like I normally do for some of these updates. So this is already, yeah, it's gonna be a 40 minute video. I don't want this to totally balloon out of control and be over an hour. So uh, you can see this is coming in real ugly. It, it's just like the leaves are gnarled, the edges are curled, uh, you know, what's going on. So I think that's just a hallmark of how leaf primordial or leaves uh, look as a plant regenerates or recovers from a very horrible situation. So you can see there's just leaf primordia everywhere. There's petioles developing and elongating. It's day 657. But you can see uh, as the leaves come out, they sort of shade the trunk and that helps the trunk get more green and recover its hue. And uh, the trunk still looks uh, very heavily scarred from all the disease problems and health problems of this plant. Uh, but actually in the last apartment, you know, the, the trunk and the foliage didn't look bad at all, but the full sun of this new environment has just really ravaged the plant. It's starting to look a little bit better on the top. So um, it's not getting taller yet. It just needs to recover and have full foliage. And maybe that will protect the trunk from sunburn if that's what's even going on at all. So it's day 664. So we're approaching the end of this video. We got 30 more days of progress. And you can see the trunk has actually seemingly thickened a little bit. It's really hard to tell, so I held my finger up to it. You could even see the reflection of the, the color of my finger on the trunk, so it's a little bit glossy and uh, it's developing more of a bark. And the parts uh, above this point are, I guess, bark is coming in, that's where the modeled uh, regions are, but you can see offshoots um, developing. And they're not very obvious at this point, but uh, clearly we've got one right in front of us. And these others could potentially become offshoots. The top, I don't know, it doesn't look like it's gonna grow straight out anymore, um, but it can still continue an overall straight up uh, mode of growth. I think since this was grown from seed, that's what it's gonna do. Uh, unlike cuttings, um, which I just started three series of, you know, uh, a month or two before this, they tend to branch out all over the place, just like that um, fig tree that I have growing. So it's day 673. This is the final day of the update. You can see the trunk has thickened. The offshoots are noticeable now, although they're not blindingly obvious just because the, the foliage is so dense of new leaves. And uh, it's all still very underdeveloped and packed together and you can see things are really starting to come along. Uh, there are leaves developing that don't really resemble the leaves that I had in the previous apartment, but they're gaining in size. And my feeling is that within a month, I'm gonna get some decent sized leaves. And maybe at the two month mark after this, I'm gonna have some really big leaves and the plant will maybe uh, 
gain a foot in growth or, or at least a few inches and more resemble what it should. So I think this series is uh, recovering and the updates will be a lot more frequent from now on because there's a lot more positive progress to, to uh, be covering. And all of my plants are doing really well. So the Coco Choir transplant was basically the key to solving all of this. So thanks for watching and please stay tuned to my channel for further updates.